in 2019 for this area we had a pretty severe snowstorm it did a lot of damage it ripped down trees it dumped trees across the road this is the road actually after it was cleared it was way worse before there was no power for two weeks there's the power lines just laying in the yard and you know there's uh, seven of them and all of them were broken off here's another shot where you can see the snow coming down it just kept coming down like that wet and sticky for two days Here's the old schoolhouse. And believe it or not, that's after the snowstorm. It didn't crush it. We figured for sure it would have been crushed. So I decided to build a big metal frame to reinforce the schoolhouse and jack it up. So we built the frame and loaded on the trailer and uh, the long beams we loaded onto the truck. The yard goat, which is the yellow thing, was really helpful in building this thing. And then we drove it all up and uh, installed it in the schoolhouse. Here's it installing a long beam. They're 32 feet. And here it is with the same beam pushing it in, lifting it up, and then it pushed it in through the end of the schoolhouse. Here's the a video of the schoolhouse after we've installed the big metal frame. You can see it looks really dilapidated, but amazingly the problems are not with the roof structure. They're with the walls and the foundation, or lack thereof. This front section is actually newer than the rest of the house and we plan on just tearing it off because it really doesn't even belong. It was an add-on and it wasn't done very well and it's actually way more rotted than the rest of the house. And here's the roof back on again with a roof cap and plenty of screws. And there's a big hole in the side of it. Um, that gap there is uh, how far down that wall sank. And that hole there was basically, we just pushed out. Here's the one of the upright posts. You can see through the hole in the wall and the, the base on the ground and the jack. There's four jacks. Uh, four, so all, you, all four corners can be um, lifted independently, well, semi-independently. Anyway, as we walk around here, you can see the door where there used to be a window, a window where there used to be a window that's smaller than the original window. This happened on this schoolhouse. People kept moving things. These couple big trees, they're going to come in handy because we're going to saw those down. And a friend of mine has a portal sawmill. We can make some new rough saw to, to rebuild the walls. Walking around back here, you can again see there was a window there. Now there's a door. And there's a window that was boarded up. Um, and you can also see here where we cut our holes to put the long beams through. There's, there's one on either side. I'll try to get... It's hard to see with the video, but I'll try to zoom in and hope that the brightness will adjust so you can see how the hole was made and how the beams go through it. Um, the beams are uh, a little longer than the house. We expected them to stick out, so we didn't really expect them to stick out that much because the whole house has a tilt to it. You can see there's about a foot out at the top of the house, which is all right. We'll just jack the house straight up and rebuild the walls straight down from the, the roof. So the, the house will basically jump to the right one foot. And you can see how we had the beams going through and there's a piece of two by four underneath that we use to slide the beam in. They weigh about 400 pounds, I estimate. Um, they're made out of two pieces of C-channel welded together. And then I was a little short, so the end sections are made out of all kinds of stuff welded together. That's why they look strangely shaped. Now we're inside, and you can see there's the old uh, rough saw one by that they used for the ceiling, and it's starting to fall down here by the chimney. Um, and you can see the hole where the beams come in. And now you can see, you know, the whole side of this thing is just covered with rough saw one by. And here's the upright with the jack on it and the uh, braces that are attached to the uh, long beams, the 32 foot beams. And these braces are uh, about 13 feet tall um, and then they can be jacked up 18 inches. And then we cut a hole in the floor, a slot basically, so that the bottom beam could run along the, the dirt and rock, which is, it's really sort of sandy rock underneath this schoolhouse. And uh, then that connects to the opposite upright with its jack, and it goes up to the the beam along the ceiling. And there's the other hole in the, in the wall, and here's a hole in the inside wall. There was basically 
three inside walls, four maybe, depending on how you count, that were holding this whole building up. The outside walls had rotted off on the bottom so badly that it was being held up, the whole roof structure was being held up by this inside walls, uh, kind of like a big umbrella. So here you can see the inside wall and there was like some sort of a drop ceiling that somebody installed at one point. The schoolhouse was used, it was a house that people lived in and then it was just like somebody's greenhouse for a while. Um, I mean, here is along the top where the 32-foot beam comes through and uh, another upright. And you can see here the floor was really rotted. And, but you can also see how this was just built on large logs that were, you know, hewn down to, to size with a, just a draw knife. All hand built. Um, and here's this little tiny, I don't know, 10 foot by 10 foot room that the, the beams go through. Now the upper beam goes through on one side. It doesn't go through on the other side because this, this is like, I don't know, maybe it was um, somebody's bedroom, but it's like 12 feet tall and 10 feet wide. So it's a very strange shape. Anyway, here's the, uh, the front wall inside and you can see that doors were there and then there were windows there and then the door moved and then they patched up this spot and you can't tell what part of the wall really was originally there and what part of the wall was somebody's moved window or door. And then there's this strange beam that's nailed in that goes like halfway across and I have no idea what structural support it was supposed to give. Um, and here's our slot in the floor on this front side. And here's the fourth upright in the jack. And you can say we haven't jacked this part up very much because um, uh, we haven't decided how far up that one's really going to end up going. Um, you can see I had to make sure I put all the pieces together in the same order, so they're all they're all numbered. Um, you know, I didn't take the time to actually make them all exactly inter interchangeable, and um, I basically assembled the thing and welded it in place, and then took it back apart. Uh, so it has to be assembled in the same order, uh, within reason. I think that stuff's pretty close. You could you could probably tweak it a little bit and get it all fit together in another schoolhouse if you need to do this again. Here's the inside of the front section. It's really dilapidated, as you can see. Uh, you know, it's got a different kind of siding, and the ceiling was made out of press board, so it just sort of fell off and turned into sawdust. And uh, so that one, that's just going away. We don't need that section at all. But there are a nice nest of bees in there, and we want to save those and put them into a bee box. So we can't really do that until spring because you're not supposed to move the bees when they're hibernating because then they won't have the food they need and they'll die. So we're kind of waiting on that till springtime. Here I'm trying to get a shot of the gap that opened up above the internal walls. This was what I had hoped for. This was really good to see. This gap indicates that the roof structure uh, is strong enough to support itself again. So now all the force has been taken off the inside walls and it's being held up by our metal structure. Um, this way we can tear out the inside walls that don't belong and, um, and then we can take out the floors and then you know maybe replace one wall at a time or whatever we want and we don't have to do anything in any kind of uh, hurry because of the fact that we've got it stable and here you can see because I'm up on a ladder that the the braces to the the 32 foot beams that run the length of the building and I'll try to climb up a little higher and uh, try to get some shots of in the attic part. It's really tall. It's like 13 feet tall at the peak and it's 20 by 35 so it's a lot of space and it's got all 2x6s, rough sawn 2x6s for floor and the rod in them is really minimal. I, you know, I found a, sp a few spots that need some repair but um, the thing is really pretty solid and this made me confident enough to go up on the roof and put the roofing back on. Previously the tin we'd put up there we just sort of threw ropes over and drug it up and screwed it on with uh, or attach it with wire uh, and it didn't survive the snowstorm it just the snow built up on it and then it just pulled them off here back we're back outside there's the one of the trees that's going to give its life to help rebuild the schoolhouse and here's the other side where you can see that it had pairs of windows and I think that these pairs of windows were not originally that way I think what they did is they took windows from the other side and moved them to here for some reason they wanted all the windows on this side. This weird thing of moving windows around was um, uh, an ailment that this schoolhouse had.